I'm going to talk to you about a report that we wrote uh, for CDP, uh, formerly the Carbon Disclosure Project, um, on the subject of supply chain engagement uh, in emission reduction. And I hope that will give you some thoughts about what industry and supply chains are currently doing in emission reduction, and hopefully, therefore, some thoughts to take through to your own organizations and what you can do differently. Very briefly, the Carbon Trust is an organization that focuses on delivering an economy that's fit for the planet. We're about economic growth, but we're also about a sustainable economy. And we work with organizations by providing advice and technology development, assurance and certification to enable them to reduce emissions and deliver resource efficiency. We're a mission-driven, not-for-profit company based in London, but we work from six offices around the world and work globally, mostly with governments and large corporations. So this is the report. It's entitled Missing Link, Harnessing the Power of Purchasing for a Sustainable Future. And the missing link, this report suggests, is supply chain engagement. The companies that contributed to the survey that this report is based upon are accountable for $2.7 trillion of expenditure. Just 89 companies, supply chains, account for that level of expenditure. The ratio of greenhouse gas emissions between direct operations and supply chain emissions is four to one. So that's saying that the supply chain delivers four times the amount of greenhouse gas production compared to the organization that they are supplying. And that's a very typical ratio across a lot of industry. So the supply chain itself is the much bigger contributor for most organizations. But there's a lot of variability in that split, and a lot of, therefore, risk associated with how organizations are managing greenhouse gas emissions. So you can see on this chart that on the left-hand side, the orange denotes an organization's direct emissions from manufacturing their own products or producing their own services. The gray represents the emissions from the supply chain, so those organizations supplying that company. Now clearly if you've got supply chain emissions supply, and those companies are supplying into your operations, you have a degree of exposure to what they're doing. And that applies to greenhouse gas emissions. It also applies to things like labor rights, to water and resource consumption. It gives you a degree of exposure. And so it gives you a degree of risk. But it also gives you a degree of opportunity. This chart separately looks at where the greenhouse gas emission saving opportunities have been identified and whether they're in direct operation or they are in the supply chain operation. And you can see here that for the majority, because of that four to one ratio, are finding opportunities within their supply chain. Now, if you are a company with a big supply chain, that means you've got greenhouse gas emission reduction opportunity and cost saving opportunity in your supply chain. If you are a supplier to another organization, then you have opportunity to deliver yourself or to the customer that's buying from you. But to extract these opportunities, the key thing is the need to work collaboratively. Interestingly, most interestingly from my point of view in this survey, Companies are identifying both climate change risk and climate change opportunity, and yet they're not delivering greenhouse gas emission reduction. So if you look at the top line on this chart, 74% identify climate change risk. That's risk to their business from climate change, whether that's due to reduction in water supply, rising sea levels, rising atmospheric volatility, shift in agricultural production, there are risks associated with climate change. But 68%, nearly the same amount, identify opportunity from climate change. And that might be opportunity to develop new products and services, to strip emissions out of their production system, to capture greenhouse gas savings and energy reduction savings. But look at the bottom, only 34% report an overall decrease in emissions. So they see risk, they see opportunity, but they're not reducing the emissions to address the problem. And that's where we want to see action. That point about action is reflected in this chart, which shows that of 4,366 suppliers, only 
of those suppliers have supply chain emissions in targets in place. 5% are addressing that issue throughout their own supply chain. But also what we identify is that best practice organizations are addressing this issue. They are getting to grips with their supply chains. They are addressing emissions collaboratively. And here are some examples of how they can do that. Firstly, they're taking a comprehensive approach. Now, this is a classic business school kind of tool, looking at how you address a challenge by identifying the issues, understanding it, and working through them systematically. Organizations like Kellogg and Company are then taking their suppliers on board and working with them collaboratively. They're saying, let's get our suppliers to measure and report their scope one and scope two emissions so that emissions can be reduced. Let's adopt science-based targets that are consistent with Paris outcomes and a two degree scenario and work together to get emissions down. Now, the report identifies eight key ways in which an organization can start to address supply chain emissions. Then they're split in terms of those efficiency and performance issues, which are more incremental, and what we call transformation opportunities, which are much more structural and deep-rooted. And I won't read through those eight, but the point of this tool is to give you some indications on where to look for them. And companies, leading companies in this field, Walmart, PepsiCo, Lego, BT, Cow Corporation, these organizations have set up a series of initiatives to engage suppliers in emission reduction. Whether that's collaborative proposition development, collaborative emission measurement and tracking, collaborative engagement on through the whole supply chain initiatives to reduce emissions. These organizations are working with their suppliers to deliver emission reduction and capture the supply chain emission benefit and cost saving benefit from doing so. And it's nicely caught by Acer Corporation that suggests that supply chain partners are the critical stakeholders for pursuing sustainability. Not just one partner, the critical. Because in an organization like Acer, the majority of supply chain emissions associated with the computers are made by the supply chain suppliers. That's where the emissions are being produced. That's where the cost saving potential exists. That's where the resource efficiency potential exists. That's where it exists. And it's where there is the opportunity to build in initiatives like circular economy, like product design for sustainable development. So supply chain engagement is really important. It's important for your organization to address your suppliers. It's important for your organization to address your own emissions so that you know how to feed into your own customers and their strategies for emission reduction. It's worth then looking at then where are these savings coming from? The report identifies $12.4 billion of cost saving associated with carbon reduction emission. So obviously a lot of that is, is energy, a lot of it is resource efficiency, a lot of it is process redesign, a lot of it is manufacturing for zero waste. And 35% is coming through product design, designing products better to be more efficient, less consuming of energy, more able to be recycled, more able to be stripped down and reused. And hence a further 28% then comes from the recovery of those products that are designed to be recovered and recycled and from the components that are designed to be taken out and used again. There's obviously then a reduction in transport because you're moving less products and services around. Only 7% of this has come from energy efficiency. Um, and yet obviously consuming energy is a big carbon emitter, but it's consuming resources and using resources through the supply chain that, that's the big part of the emissions and the reduction potential. So $12.4 billion of savings. And those are the kind of savings that we're looking for in your organizations and your supply chains. So key messages from this report, and I'd encourage you to download it from the CDP website and give it a good read, because I've just skimmed through little bits of this that I thought you'd find interesting. But the key points are that large buyers are really big agents of systematic change in greenhouse gas emission and resource efficiency. Member and supplier action enables the capture of those initiatives and to yield really tangible business results. And efficiency and performance initiatives done at scale 
can deliver very significant sums in terms of emission reduction and bottom line impact. Finally, innovation and collaboration is the key to success of this. This is not about confrontational negotiation between buyer and supplier in the old model of, say, retailers and suppliers back in the 80s. This is about genuine supply chain innovation, collaborative development and working together in order to deliver much more favorable outcomes. And the point is, it is a win-win discussion. It's a win-win relationship. It is not a head-to-head -head negotiation. And I hope that gives you a sense of some of the initiative that you'll see in this report and what you might be able to take through to your organizations in order to help to deliver an economy fit for the planet. Thank you.